the shooting process for an episode usually starts about a year in advance. We do uh, uh, we get the script together and try to nail it down about a year in advance because it takes that long to get CGI ready, to get backgrounds ready, to get the casting in place. Um, oftentimes we have to do auditions for each um, each episode, each guest part in the episode, um, and then we start to get really into it and uh, figure out where everything's going to be shot, what direction people are going to be looking. Um, obviously with virtual acting you have to be careful with 180 lines and people's you know, direction that they're talking so it doesn't look like they're talking to the back of each other's heads. <laughs> Um, just and scheduling. Scheduling is one of those things that can be a real nightmare when you have a large cast, and uh, there's a lot of people that are trying to you trying to get them on and in camera. It's ideal if you can get them on camera together so that they can interact with each other and whatnot. But that's not always possible, so um, sometimes you have to really work around that. When it comes to CGI, CGI is one of those things that we just wouldn't be able to do a series period if it wasn't done ahead of time because it takes so long to set up the shots and render the shots that if you try and do that in post-production, right now our post-production is like two to three weeks because the CGI is already done, the footage is already keyed, and it just goes into the computer, edits together, do your sound effects, do your music, and boom, you're ready to release your episode. But um, if it wasn't set up that way, I don't know how we would do it in, uh, in the amount of time that we do it. And that's one of the things that makes something serialized possible. Uh, we do all the special effects for the show in Lightwave 3D right now. Um, I actually do most of the effects myself. Uh, the ships, we have a couple people that help us out with backgrounds and, and things of that nature. So um, it's a team effort. But uh, that's one of the things that I like to focus on. That's one of my personal, I guess, things that I love about making a fan film is having these visuals that really just emphasize the show. One of the things about doing a, a low to no budget fan film is that you make do with what you have and you try to make the most of what you have and we've done that and I think if anyone who's seen this show from the first season through the fifth season will see that uh, we've certainly learned from our mistakes and you know we'll continue to make them but you know we won't make, this, we won't make the same ones twice I don't think. I think it's always harder to make a series than anybody possibly imagines going into it because um, there's all these different items that have to be brought together and it's really easy to think, oh, something will just slap together and it'll work. And it doesn't always happen. Um, you know, I've seen people try and do something and they may have one element really good, but then they'll not have audio or bad, really bad audio. And, if you have one element that's really low, it drags everything else down, so it's it's really hard to, to bring everything up to a certain standard. The writing is really where you need to invest time, because a strong story will, will shine through uh, the worst special effects and even some bad acting. If you've got a story that's engaging and compelling, and characters who are engaging and compelling, uh, even uh, even bad acting will, will let that come through if the writing and the storytelling is, is good. We know the general direction things are going. Um, Hidden Frontier is very much uh, an art driven show so we have storylines that have been running through from the beginning of the series and will run through to the end of the series so keeping, keeping track of those um, and uh, building on them, making sure we're, we're not being predictable uh, but also giving fans what they want to see. Uh, so there's a lot to juggle there that uh, uh, we start off with. Uh, so looking at, uh, I'm also a big fan of looking back at old episodes for, for story ideas, little references they make that I wonder about, well, what, what happened with that three years later? Um, and same even with influences from, from classic Trek, from the previous series. And, you know, whatever, what is, what's going on with Trills? What would, what would things on Trill be like? So we delve into those kind of social issues a little bit more. I look at a lot of our episodes, I look at a lot of uh, classic Star Trek episodes, Next Generation episodes. We're heavily in influenced by Deep Space Nine, which also has uh, a lot of, uh, took a serialized approach to, especially its last few seasons, and we're doing the same thing. So, uh, so I look at, at how they balance uh, the cast, you know, screen time for people, um, how action is balanced against drama, character uh, stories versus more sort of plot driven stories um, and and then just look at what what's unique about our show 
um, what are the unique kinds of relationships we've built, that some of which are, are new kinds of relationships that haven't been seen before in Star Trek. Not only do I get to act every once in a while, I get to direct and uh, I get to kind of hone that craft and practice directing because it's never as easy as it looks. This is the best acting class because you get to be right here in front of the camera and there's nothing like actually doing it in real time that uh, hones that craft and it, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun and it's, it's good work. Hi, I'm on the set of Hidden Frontier and as you can see we're on the bridge of the starship here. Um, and now we'll switch over to uh, what our set really looks like. And, uh, now we're just in front of the green screen. If you can pull back a little bit. Uh, and we've got a wall here that's uh, all green. We also have a green green floor and cloth that we can set up. We don't have the cloth out right now, but the cloth is useful in uh, keying out certain objects and consoles and things of that nature that we might need to key. We have some props over here that we use uh, that we've collected over the seasons. Uh, if you've seen the show, you may recognize some of them from different episodes. Um, here is one of our villainous uh, phasers, uh, prop made for us. We also have a tricorder, uh, our away missions, and things of that nature phasers that have been dropped uh, on location and destroyed. <laughs> so basically everything that you would need to make uh, a Star Trek show, uh, different alien prosthetics and uh, Joran nose. Uh, as you can see on the monitor we're looking at a live picture. Um, over here is where we do all of our keying with the slide board here and uh, we can switch between different okay I just switched us uh, oh. and uh, of course uh, this is uh, Final Cut Pro we do all of our editing on Final Cut Pro and uh, this is also our background generator so the background generator uh, is what's projected behind the actors and the green screen so that's all keyed live, which makes for easier post-production. So we do all of our compositing, or rather all of our CGI in Lightwave 3D. Um, as you can see, we're looking at a uh, wireframe, or rather a pre-rendered pre graphic here for Lightwave. It starts off as a wireframe, and then uh, the final renders uh, quite a bit more. It takes quite a bit more time to, to render. This just took a few seconds. And we're fortunate enough to have uh, some pretty high quality models. I've done a lot of modeling myself and uh, we've traded with a lot of people online uh, to use their models. So uh, it's one of the great things about the internet community is that everybody, a lot of people are willing to share and, and help out. So we've gained a lot of good looking graphics as a result. I think season six is really going to be our season of villains because uh, we're going to have some really exciting villains on the show. Uh, some, some faces that we've seen before and some new faces also uh, that are going to have a lot to do with some of the plot twists that are going to happen in season six. So I think it's going to be really interesting um, to see how all of it plays out. Uh, one of our biggest villains, Sirach, he'll be back. Um, he'll be doing some new things and causing some new problems for, for his uh, arch rival, Tolian Naros, who's also one of our fan favorite characters. So um, the interplay between the villains and, and the actual cast members is it's not just cardboard cookie cutter things where you know you've got one villain you know trying to kill another villain it's more their interpersonal relationships going on between these villains that are hopefully compelling and I think that'll be exciting to see how that plays out this season. I think fans have a lot to look forward to I think there's a lot of storylines that have been going on in season five with uh, uh, Aster and Zen the uh, gay subplot um, there are a couple of other stories going on with uh, the whole tetrahedron story. Well, I think there's going to be a lot of things in Season 6 that fans can look forward to. Um, we've got some really exciting scenes coming up uh, with the season premiere, and some really exciting plot twists also um, from some of our major cast members. We've got a lot of new faces, and a lot of new locations, a lot of new villains, and uh, I think it's going to be exciting, so I'm just going to go on.